Hey, it's Rory Pitts here with Luke and Rory brought to you by eXp Realty. And today I want to talk to you about what's going on in the market and more specifically what sellers are experiencing in the market. Um, you probably are wondering if your house is on the market right now and it's been sitting for a while, you're probably asking yourself, why am I not getting multiple offers? Why are buyers not knocking down my door to come take a look at my house? Well, things have changed. Things have changed quite a bit. Uh, since two or three years ago when your neighbor's house had 50,000 offers on it or your family member's house had 10,000 offers on it, things have changed quite a bit. And I want to go over some of those things today, give you a little bit of insight as to what we're seeing out there in the market and give you a little bit more, give you some more tools to be able to battle what we're seeing out there. Uh, one of the things, and this is kind of strange, one of the things that we're seeing right now is there's actually less houses on the market than there were three years ago. And so in one sense you would think, well, heck, why isn't my house selling just like flying off the shelf? Well, along with less houses, we actually have less buyers on the market right now. And one of the things we'll talk about is interest rates and that's what it's affecting buyers right now. We'll get to that here in a second. Um, but here, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to focus on. If your house is on the market and you're not getting a lot of activity, one of the things that you need to do is take a look and see, does your house shine against the competition out there? You know, jump onto different websites out there. You can jump onto Zillow. You could jump onto realtor.com, um, even Facebook marketplace, hop on there and see houses like yours. What do they look like? Are the, are the photos, are they, do they just pop? or did the agent use their iPhone to take the pictures? Um, what does the house look like? Is it staged correctly? And the thing is, look at those other houses right around your price point, right in your neighborhood, right in your area, and ask yourself, does my house stand out from the rest of these houses? Do the photos stand out from the rest of these houses? And if, if those things don't, then you need to talk to your agent about changing that because you gotta think about it buyers they're typically sitting on the couch on a tuesday night and they've got netflix open but they're not necessarily thrilled with what they're watching so they got their phone open because they are interested in possibly buying a house so they got their zillow app open or they got the luke and rory app open and they see a house in an area that they kind of interested in and they see the outside of the house because that's typically what agents do is they put the the front of the house as the main photo and they'll They'll open it up and they'll see the living room and they'll see the kitchen and they'll see the primary bedroom. And does your listing pop? Does your listing catch their eye or are you just another listing out there? And if you're just another listing and you're frustrated with your house, not getting offers or not getting activity, you need to take a look at those things and talk to your agent about it. Like I said, the market, has changed quite a bit. It's not the same as it was back in 2021 and 2022. Um, we're just not seeing the avalanche of offers. Now, I'll give you a little caveat here. There are some pockets out there that we are still seeing multiple offers, but not seven. <laughs> we're seeing maybe two or possibly three. Now, again, I know some agents, they might, they might actually be getting five or seven offers and that's a unique situation. Overall, on average, we're not seeing that out there. So I did a little bit of research and I think you'll find this very interesting. As you know, both Luke and I, we focus on Pierce County, Kitsap County, and Mason County. And I looked and did some research on the numbers that we're seeing in all three of those counties. All the counties are very similar in their percentages of what we're seeing. And Pierce County and Kitsap County are very similar in their numbers. Obviously Mason County, the median sales price of a house is lower just because it's a different area. Uh, but we're seeing Kitsap catch up to Pierce County um, and even in some statistics past Pierce County, which I thought was very interesting. But I wanna share these numbers with you because I think, I think this gives a better idea of what we're seeing out there. The median home price in Pierce County is $565,000. That blows my mind because I remember when I first got in the business, when we were looking at $300,000 houses, now granted that was 10 years ago, but when I first got in the business, we were looking at $300,000 houses and we're thinking to ourselves, 
oh my gosh, this is really high priced. Well, gone are those days. Uh, the median sale, the median home price in Pierce County is 565. And just for reference, the median home price in Kitsap County is 575. So very similar in that, uh, in that uh, metric there. So then I wanted to take a look if I'm a buyer or I'm a buyer's agent and I'm trying to set up a search for my client, I might be setting up something between 400 and $600,000 just as a starting point, not as the, you know, you're going to dial that in a little bit further. But just for the heck of it, I did between uh, 500 and 600,000, or no, I'm sorry, between 400 and 600,000 dollars. There are 539 homes active on the market right now, as of this morning. 539 active homes. <laughs> Let me put that into perspective. <laughs> Sit down. Pour yourself a nice cup of tea, something to just chill. I'm going to put this into perspective for you. In June of 2022, just two years ago, we had on the market 2,318 homes for sale. Residential houses. Didn't throw in condos, didn't throw in townhomes. Just regular old residential houses. 2,000. 318 homes were for sale. As of this morning, there are 1,602 homes for sale. We have 716 less houses for sale today at this moment than we did exactly two years ago. So inventory is down, which then you thinking about supply and demand. Well, so supply and demand says that with inventory down, demand will be up. Is that right, Rory? Supply is down, demand is up. We are seeing that. However, buyers, and again, we're going to talk about here in a second, the buyers out there have something that is holding them back. In a, in a normal situation, we'd probably see more offers on houses with such a such a low supply i mean that blows my mind 1602 houses and two years ago we had 2300 houses on the market so supply is down without a doubt supply is down <sighs> interest rates this is what buyers are running into this is the problem that buyers are having right now is interest rates now I'm just going to give you some general interest rate numbers. I am not a lender. I don't pretend to be one. I know many lenders that are really good at their job and I can have you talk to them to get more accurate, detailed information. But here's what I know, just simple math. So let's go back to 2021. In 2021, let's say you got a $500,000 loan. Now granted, the house prices were a little bit less back then, but let's just, let's play, let's play this game. Back in 2021, you get a $500,000 loan and your interest rate is around 3%. That makes your monthly payment $2,108. Now I'm excluding taxes, I'm excluding insurance because we both know those have gone up in the last few years as well. But just the principal and interest, you're looking at $2,108. Today, in 2024, a $500,000 loan at around 7%, I'm using 7% as my number here because it's right around there, you're looking at a home mortgage of principal and interest of $3,327 a month. That is a difference of $1,219 a month. I gotta tell you guys, as I'm looking at that number and I'm reading it out loud, that blows my mind. So buyers out there who would have wanted to take out a $500,000 loan at 7% are going to be paying $1,200 more a month. And that's the rub. And that's the problem we're seeing out there is we do have less houses on the market, but we also have less buyers who can buy in this market. That's a problem. <laughs> And you're probably asking yourself, okay, well then let's say I want to get a house payment 
of $2,108 like they did back in 2021. You got to find a house on the market for $317,000. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing except a cardboard box and maybe a woodshed <laughs> for $317,000 out there right now. It's just the way it, our area is right now. And I, and I laugh, I laugh only because it's uncomfortable. Like this is bananas. I've got kids, I've got adult kids who would love to get into their first house and start building up equity. They can't, they can't in this area. And it's very disheartening. So I only share this because I want you as a seller to understand this is the trouble that buyers are running into out there. And so if you're gonna get your house sold, understand there's less buyers out there. Your house has to be perfect. It truly has to be perfect because you have a smaller pool of buyers and you've got competition out there. You got a, a, a two whammy going on right now. So you gotta make sure your house is perfect and you gotta, you gotta price your house competitively. The thing is, is that I get it. You wanna get as much as you can for your house. Absolutely, I totally understand that. And let's say your house goes on the market for $500,000 but you wanted to put it on the market. Well, let me back that up a little bit. Let's say the market value of your house is $500,000, but you wanna put it on the market for 550 or 575. I get it. You wanna try and get as much money as you can. You wanna fish and see if you can reel in a buyer. The problem with that strategy is a couple things. First off, I actually had somebody ask me this the other day. Well, why don't, why don't buyers just put an offer on our place and then we'll just kind of go from there? Buyers are not, right now, they're not going to do low ball offers. They, because they, they get it. They understand. You, let's say for that example, you put the house on the market for $575,000 and they come back and they offer you five fifteen. dollars What are you going to do? One, one week on the market, two weeks on the market. You're going to dismiss it. So buyers are not just going to, they're not just gonna put an offer out there and then hopefully you'll take it. That normally happens after 30 days where all of a sudden you as a seller start thinking, oh my gosh, my house isn't moving. Um, so you gotta keep that in mind. The other thing is, is that again, you could put your house on the market for 575, but it has to appraise at 575. And if the market value of the other houses in the neighborhood or in the area show that your house is more like 500,000, unless you're going to get an all cash buyer at 575, you're going to get, you're going to get a buyer who's getting a mortgage, who's getting a loan and the appraiser has to verify that value. And again, if all the houses in the neighborhood are selling at 500, they're going to appraise it right around 500 maybe 510, maybe 520, but they're not going to appraise it at 575. And the thing is buyers, they're not going to have that extra money to bring to the table. Where again, like three years ago, you had buyers that had cash or they had extra cash where they could put an additional down payment down. So you'd still get that 575 because the buyers were in a position where they could do that. They're not in that position today. So pricing the house accordingly is so important if you want to get your house sold. If you're just putting it out there to get some feelers and see what's going on, people are just going to swipe right past it. And then that becomes another problem is that all of a sudden buyers see a house on the market for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. What's wrong with the house? That's their first, that's their first question that they're asking their agent. Hey, this house has been on the market for 45 days. What's wrong with it? And then us as agents, we'll jump in there into the MLS. We'll take a look and we'll either we'll see a history of uh, under contract and then back in the market, under contract, back in the market. And that explains one thing could be an issue with inspections. Or if we don't see any activity, well, that might show that the seller is not willing to lower their price and nobody's willing to put in offers. And that that's another problem too, as a seller. So it's important to realize you got to price your house accordingly to the market value. And I, I would love, we would all love to get you 575 in that scenario, but if it's closer to 500, 
you got to realize that that's closer to what the market value is and what it will appraise for. And if you want to close, that's what you got to look at. The other thing I want to share with you, and I've been a little apprehensive about sharing this, but I think it's important. And the weird thing is I'm now in a position to be that guy. <laughs> so <coughs> please take this. I'm coming to you from a place of love. Experience matters. There was a time when I, was, when I first got in this business and I didn't know what I didn't know. And I had a lot of people around me that helped guide me and lead me to become a better agent. And I can say the same thing for Luke. Luke was like that when he first got in the business. He had people that guided him, helped him be a better agent. And he is where he is today. And I am where I am today because of that experience. All that to say that experience matters. Now, I get it. If you're a newer agent out there, you probably don't want to hear what I'm going to say. Because I didn't want to hear it when I heard it. But experience matters. And if you as a seller are going to use your nephew's uncle's son, I don't even know if that's correct, but just go with me on it. If you're using someone who just got their license, they might not have the experience to help you sell your house in this particular market. And that's why experience matters because we're, as Luke and I are looking at things like, is the house staged correctly? Are the, are the little things taken care of? Like the other day, we were talking to clients who are going to be putting their house on the market here soon, and we had looked at the crawl space. We didn't go down in the crawl space, but we just took off the cover, and we looked in the crawl space, and we saw water. And we told them right away, this has to be taken care of before you even go on the market, because when an, when an inspector comes in here, they're going to call it out, and when an appraiser comes here, the appraiser is going to call it out, and it has to be taken care of. So just take care of it right now. And it's those little things that Luke and I are looking for when we are helping someone put their house on the market. So I get it. I struggled. I put in my time as a newer agent to get to where I'm at today. There are some, there are some gangbuster new agents out there, but for the most part, the newer agents don't know what they don't know and experience matters. Okay. I'm going to get off my soapbox. I, I, and I'm not bashing newer agents. Please don't think for a second I'm bashing you. It's just the reality of it. And I, I, I was there. You just got to keep on hustling and you'll get to the point where you get the experience. Okay. Enough is enough. All right. So we talked about pricing the house accordingly. <clears throat> and uh, of course, one of the things I've heard, and I, I've talked to a couple people about this and we'll finish up here. One of the things I've heard is about politics. 2024 is an election year. I don't want to worry about selling my house this year. Uh, I'm not really interested in looking to buy a house right now. You know, politics. I want to get through the presidential election, blah, 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 blah. I get it. I get it. I am so just tired with politics and everything going on. But here's the thing. It's not going to matter who the president is. Now, let me, let me back that up a little bit. Life is still going to go on. People still have to sell their house. People still have to buy a house. And so if you're, if you're waiting for the election to be over, if that's the only thing holding you back, let's talk. Let's grab a cup of coffee or go grab a beer or grab lunch or something. Because life is going to go on no matter what happens in November. And just realize that there are still buyers out there that have to buy. And there's still sellers out there that have to sell. And the first thing that comes to my mind is our military personnel. You know, we're a very military heavy area between Bremerton and between Lakewood. We got two military bases right there. So you've always got military personnel that need to PCS to the Northwest or they need to PCS out of the Northwest. And so remember and realize that they can't wait for the election to be over. They have to sell or they have to buy. So all I'm saying here is don't let politics hold you back from putting your house on the market or from buying a house because life is going to go on. And as long as we don't have another pandemic <laughs> or, or other crazy things, that's my asterisk in all this. If it's something crazy, okay, all bets are off. But most of the time, life is going to go on and you still have to buy a house. You still have to sell a house. Okay. So in conclusion, and I appreciate you sticking with me through this. If your house is on the market right now, there's, 
you've got competition. You've got other houses, you've got less houses, so less supply, but you only have so many buyers. And so buyers are being a little bit more picky, even with less supply. So you gotta make sure your house is sticking out against all the other competition. And like I said, pull it up on Zillow. Pull, pull up your neighborhood on Zillow or pull up your neighborhood on the Luke and Rory app. Pull that up and take a look at your competition. Take a look at what their listings look like. And if it doesn't pop, or if it does pop, then you might need to take a look at yours. And that's the other thing too. If your house is on the market right now, pull up your listing. Pull up your listing like you're a brand new buyer looking to buy your house. Does your house pop on those, on those uh, platforms? Does it pop on Zillow? Does it pop on the Luke and Rory app? And if it doesn't, you need to talk to your agent. You need to talk about staging. You need to talk about pictures. You need to talk about marketing. Is the house being marketed? Are you allowing buyers to come take a look at it in an open house? There's so many things that your agent should be doing for you in this market. And I'll, and I'll leave you guys with this. I've been in the business almost 10 years now. And I've been through a normal, somewhat normal cycle. And then I've been through the crazy cycle of uh, 2020. Yeah, 2020 to about 2022. And now I'm in this cycle. And I am learning lessons with each listing. And there are lessons I learned in 2022 that have better prepared me for today to be able to share this information with you all about getting your house sold in this type of market. All right. If you guys have any questions, do not hesitate. Give myself or give Luke a call. We'd love to sit down, go over your options, you know, I'm more than willing to buy you a cup of coffee or go grab a beer or go grab lunch or simply come on over and sit down in your kitchen or your living room and talk through your options with you. Because at the end of the day, it really does matter who you're using to help you get your house sold. All right. You guys take care of yourselves. Thanks again. And remember, with Luke and Rory, no sale, no glory. Take care.